All right, in this section we're going to be talking all about inverse functions. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about what an inverse actually is. Now, if you'll remember from things that you've done before, inverses are what you do to get the identity. Well, the identity depends on what it is that you're working with. So I've kind of set up a little bit of a table here and we're going to look at um, some different operations and what is the identity and what is the inverse for each one of those and hopefully then that'll help us to be able to figure out how we do it with functions. Okay, let's look at addition first. Do you remember what the identity is for addition? Think about what the word identity means. The identity is kind of like your identity. You know, your identity does not change depending on whether you're in class or at home or at work. You know, your identity is who you are. And that person does not change or should not change depending on your setting or your clothes or whatever. Um, so in math the identity is very very similar idea. The identity is what you do and it doesn't change something. So for instance with addition if we're going to add a number to something and it will not change that number. What is that something? Well, that would be zero. We can add zero to any number that we want to, and it will not change the number. So zero is considered the additive identity, or you could say the identity under addition. All right, once we understand what the identity is, then we can figure out how inverses work because remember inverses are what you do to get the identity. So think about the number 5. What would you have to add to 5 in order to get the identity of 0? Well that would have to be a negative 5, right? So 5 and negative 5 are inverses of each other because they are what you would do addition to get the additive identity of zero. Let's look at multiplication. Again, we have an identity under multiplication and it's not the same thing. Identities and inverses are very specific depending on what it is that you're working with. So, but the idea is the same. In multiplication, we're looking for a number that we could multiply and it would not change anything that we're multiplying it to. That would be a 1, wouldn't it? We could multiply 1 times any number we want to, and it does not change that number. So therefore, a 1 is the multiplicative identity, or you could say the identity under multiplication. So let's think about inverses then. And again, we'll just take that number 5. That's a nice number. What would you have to multiply, we're talking about multiplication here, what would you have to multiply to 5 to get the identity of 1? That would be 1 fifth, absolutely. So the numbers 5 and 1 fifth are inverses under multiplication. These also have another name, do you remember them? These are called reciprocals. Reciprocals are inverses for multiplication. And back on the addition, opposites are inverses under addition. All right, so let's go to functions now. There is an identity for functions, and actually we've already learned it. It's part of your library of functions. You remember that function that said f of x equals x? That is the identity function, which we could write the same thing by saying y equals x. Do you notice that in this identity function, the x and the y are identical? So I could literally write it as y equals, or x equals y, and it would be the exact same thing. For inverses for functions, you literally switch the x and the y. And if you'll remember from what we did last time, we proved that functions are inverses by doing the composition.